Hey, Mikey, so you've asked if most of the coins I own is leverage, right? Um, look, when you start in crypto, think about it like this. When, if someone's coming into crypto, you'd probably tell them, look, just get Bitcoin and Ethereum and then figure out the rest yourself. So that's what they start with, right? And then as they're in, they're like, wait a minute. Hmm, Bitcoin and Ethereum, they're pretty slow. There's this coin out here that I found. It's like 80% down from the top. My friend likes it. I think this is a chance to go up. And now suddenly what they do is, right, they have the Bitcoin and Ethereum stack. Let's say they have like $20,000 out of it. And then what they might do is they go, hmm, I'm going to pull up, pull off like 1000 and then putting into that, right? Now you shouldn't do 1000 Let's put 500 bucks into that. So you put $500 in. So, But then you might find, okay, a month later, that person discovers another coin. They're like, oh, I like, you know, this other chain, this other layer one chain. You know, maybe they're like Pulse Chain, for example. Like, okay, let me put in another $500. See what, see what happens? They're, they're slowly, they're peeling off from the core. But then you might say, oh, at, at the end of the bull market, someone says, oh, I wish I just bought all those coins from the start. But no, no, no. It takes time to for the coins to launch, one, for two, you to figure it out, and three, you develop the conviction, and four, you get an idea of what a valuable range is. And that's what actually makes like a good investor or someone who's winning in the game. So that's why, yeah, so obviously you're probably noticing, sir, what's happening, Mikey, that, yeah, I'm focusing more and more on the leverage stuff. Why? It's because I'm always standing in the field and I'm like, okay, what does the crowd want? Where is demand? Uh, is there evidence in the market that these things go up for meme coins? It's it's a no-brainer. Okay, people want meme coins. and But it's, not, it's, it's one thing to just say, okay, people want meme coins. But it's another thing for me to put the thesis here to you and say, guess what? People have learned established projects start high valuation. They're grifts. They don't give the tokens out. They dump the tokens on everybody on launch. So you have to get into launch pads or you can't participate. It's just one big shit fest. So people now go on chain and they start with new communities. They're basically revolting against the system of all the suits and all the scum. But see how uh, that, what I've just shown you is like high advanced level conviction. So that's why when someone says to me, hey, dick with butt, or what about PDI? Or what about HOA? Or what even about the Tang News Network? Like, oh, nah, nah, nah. And what, what about like Teddy Bear? Okay, you see these are Pulse Train altcoins. Even what about something like Colt Dow? What about like Ticker Bitcoin, Harry Potter, Obama? You see these? When I say these names, some people be like, dude, there's no cash flow in these. There's no fundamentals. Yeah, they say that. But I guess like the way I look at it is like, well, I am in ICOs at VVV Launchpad and I am vomiting at how high these things are going to launch because we're paying like... 100 million fully diluted just to get in, 100 million market cap, and they're going to launch at like 500 million. Can you imagine that? People have to buy on the open a minimum of 500 million market cap, and a lot of these things will start at like a billion. How disgusting is that, by the way? So I'm thinking, hmm, what are the chances? Are people going to wait until the very end to go FOMO buy this trash, or they're going to probably participate in meme coins? So you get to see. So over time, I'm trying to find more and more. Um, and yeah, you're also asking, so like, you know, you're asking Hedron instead of going deep in Hex, but yeah, look, no, no. You so say in, in part of your question as well. So talk about the meme coins and altcoins and, le and leverage on system. So meme coins stuff that's important. That's like you know super powerful. But we also have say leverage on say hex, which is like Icosa hedron. Here's the thing though, I don't know how it plays out. So I can't tell everybody just buy this. I can't say that. No one knows. I could just tell you though, if you are long hex, for example, there's only two outcomes. It goes down, which means you lose anyway, all right? Which, what's go down mean? It means it can't pump in the bull market and then it just drops. And you're not exiting because you think it's still got plenty more to go. So if PHEX goes to like, you know, five cents in the bull market, you're not getting out because you think it's gone to a dollar. But then what if the bull market ends and now it's back down to one cent? Okay, I'm just giving that a scenario. That's like a poopy scenario, yeah? Because it's dragged up by the liquidity of the rest of the market and then just down and you're like, failure, okay? In that case, you've lost everything anyway. You've literally lost everything anyway, okay? Um, what about in the case where hex goes up? If hex goes up, what does that world look like? That means there's more hex love. There's a return to it. People like that DeFi yield again. They want to join the community. In some regards, they like Richard Hart. Richard Hart's streaming. It's his first coin name. In that world, right, you got to think, all right, how does the leverage on it play? So the leverage can go to zero, which is like Icosa Hedron. You know, Icosa is like, you know, more scarce. Or Icosa can go up and rocket. So then you got to think, all right, 
There's a world where Icosa goes up and rocket, but also a world where Icosa doesn't move. So then you just got to allocate. Okay, maybe someone has like ten thousand dollars in hex, right? They got ten grand in P hex. P hex, right? They might say, well, if Icosa does well, I want some of that because it's only succeeding if my hex is up. See, they might say, well, guess what? I'm gonna put from that ten grand hex. I'm gonna peel off two grand and put it in Icosa. And now here's the thing: if hex does a ten x. Instead of having a 100 in hex, you have 80. Okay, so 100, you now have 80. So you're missing that $20,000 gap. But here's the thing. You have two grand in Icosa. So if hex does 10x and Icosa fulfills its destiny to go to the top of the ratio, that's a four multiplier on that. Which means your two grand in Icosa gets you 10 times four, 40. You see that huge difference? So now you now have, instead of, you know, your 80 grand versus the 100 that you would have on the hex, now you have 80, but now you've actually got 160. So you've actually moonshotted it. And guess what? It could actually be higher than that. You know why? Because I've made the assumption, which is actually wrong, that they peak out at the same time, but they don't. These things don't have to peak out at the same time. For example, what if hex does five and then your icosa hits the top of the ratio and you're like, oh my gosh, it hits the top of the ratio. You can rotate your icosa back into hex. So now you've stacked your hex and now you don't even look at the ratio chart anymore of icosa hex. You just look at it and you're like, you know what? Let's just see how far this goes. So actually what you've done, so at this, you've bunny hopped into a higher return. So you won't end up with 160,000 anymore. You might end up with 300,000, okay? Yes, that's actually true. You might end up with three, because what you've done is you've doubled your amount of hex. Don't worry about the maths, quick maths, but yeah, you've, that's what ends up happening. So remember in my first example I showed you, I assumed, okay, hex does 10 and then Icosa does 40 and they peak at the same time, but it doesn't have to happen like that. For example, you know, like I'll give you a very, very simple example. What if Icosa from today does a 4X by itself? It does a 4X by itself. Hex doesn't move at all. So you're in Icosa. Hex does a 4X by, uh, sorry, Icosa does a 4X by itself. And because of the initial ratio I gave you, remember you had, you had 10 grand, right? Eight into Hex, two into Icosa. Well, guess what? If your Icosa does a four, you now have in your portfolio, 8,000 of hex, 8,000 of icosa. So what you could do is, you know, your icosa, you rotate that and stack your hex. Now you are starting with $16,000 of hex at one cent. You see? So then you've now doubled that today, today. So you have $16,000 of your hex, you stacked it today, and then imagine it now goes that full amount. Imagine it does like a 20 from here. That's crazy, right? So that's why I'm showing you, you can bunny hop like this because, because markets and these ratios, they have these different narratives and these seasons and they adjust here. And there's no, you don't know how to, no one can ever perfectly time it. And also I've got to tell you this as well, very important. It's possible that when it comes to Icosa, that the peak of Icosa happens at the end of the cycle because it could be, right, the Spee and Lagard effect where, Pretty much what ends up happening is, let's say, for example, hex hits. I could actually show you to you. Let's look at the chart, sir. I can show you this now. Let's look at, this is P hex, okay? Now, I'm just throwing out examples of, okay, what if, like, this happens. P hex goes to 20 cents, okay? And everybody thinks they're late to it now. So it goes to 20 cents and they think, and they think they're late. So instead of buying Hex at 20 cents, what they do is they buy Icosa and then Icosa goes nuts. But what ends up happening is this could be the top and then just tops out, right? So that might, that what happens with Bitcoin, right? Let's say Bitcoin's at 150K, people like probably stop buying it. You just give you an example. And maybe they just start buying meme coins up 5,000 X or something stupid, you know what I mean? So that's one example you can look at. So for all, all of these, what I've shown you in this illustration, you can all look at all of this in the ICOSA. This is ICOSA USD chart. If I change to the ICOSA hex ratio, this is what it ends up looking at. So this is my this is the example I was talking about. So 
it's possible Hex doesn't go anywhere and Icosa just does a 4X, which is right up to here. So the ratio would move up here. This ratio would just move up here. And then what you could do is it's not going to happen, right? But if you want to do, you just rotate into Hex. You're just out. You're basically selling this back into Hex. You've stacked your Hex for free. All right. But remember, that's the scenario where the dream scenario works out. That's why these things are high rated. That's why you're not all in on one ID or all in on one leverage. So that's why it's important, right? And then you got to figure it out. See, no matter what happens, you always, you, you never get it perfect, but I think it's worth at least exploring that. It's many people do this, by the way, in crypto. They have, there's people out there with like 10 Bitcoin. And then what they'll do is for the altcoin season, they'll just take one Bitcoin, one, just 10%, and they'll try to turn it into more Bitcoin. So they'll like deploy and they'll, they hope Bitcoin goes nowhere and the altcoins move up and they can rotate back into Bitcoin. You're doing the exact same thing. So there you go.